How's it going, everyone? For those of you that complain that there are too many remakes, too many remasters, no new projects, no new IPs, y'all better listen up because y'all better have Claire Obscure Expedition 33 on your radar. As far as RPGs go, and a turn-based RPG, I know a lot of you guys love your turn-based RPGs, you guys better have Claire Obscure Expedition 33 on your radar. This is a game that I've already raved about based on the rollout of the game, and they've done so many things right from a promotional standpoint, and I'm sorry if I'm getting a little bit heated from it, but it comes from a good place in the sense that every single publisher that debuts games like Concord, that debuts games like Fair Game, that debuts games that are new IPs and tell us nothing about the game when you debut them, pay attention to a game like Claire Obscure Expedition 33 because that's how a game is supposed to be debuted like how it was back at the Xbox Game Showcase. And now, best of all, I thought, hey, they revealed the game and they already noted that the game was going to be out in 2025. I was like, all right, I'll tentatively take that 2025 window, but if it gets delayed to 2026, I'm not going to bug out all too much. It's certainly better than a Wolverine being revealed five years before release. A Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake getting revealed before. I don't even know if it's ever going to come out. Mass Effect being revealed, so on and so forth. But now they've just announced that Claire Obscure Expedition 33 will be launching in spring of 2025 and the voice cast has been announced and there are a lot of notable names that will be voicing the various characters. Best of all, again, spring of 2025, incredibly excited. Let's go through some of these uh, voice actors that will be here. You've got Charlie Cox from Daredevil, Born Again, and Stardust. I believe, I don't know too much about the superhero movies and Marvel and whatnot. I did watch the Spider-Man movie. Um, that all of the Spider-Men were in, and uh, Charlie Cox had a, a cameo on that as Daredevil, right? And I remember the theater going crazy, so man must be loved! Uh, Charlie Cox will be playing the main character of Gustav, a resourceful and dedicated engineer who devotes his final year of life to defeating the painters and reclaiming a future for the children. Jennifer English will be playing as Mael, a shy loner who sees the expedition as her chance to explore the world beyond and forge her own destiny. Christy Ryder as Luna, passionate scholar and mage intent on unraveling the mystery of the Paintress and entrusted with charging a path forward for the expedition. Shala Nix from The Old Garden Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty as Shiel, a cheerful and serene warrior having long accepted the brutality of the world. She was troubled by the specter of failure and deeply committed to the expedition's cause. Andy Serkis as Renoir, a forceful and passionate man. Renoir is knows that victory demands sacrifice and he is fully prepared to play the price. And would you look at that, the voice actor of Clive, Ben Star Clive from Final Fantasy 16, also in Warframe 1999, as Verso, a dangerous stranger. Verso is an outsider of unknown origins who closely tracks the expedition, also starring a variety of other characters and Man, I am incredibly excited about the game. I think that this game could do incredibly well, and the the best part about it is it's coming from a brand new studio in Sandfall Interactive. It's being published by Kepler, who aren't the most well-known publisher in the world, and you know what they did? They rolled out a debut trailer with some awesome music, legit gameplay from the title, and guess what? I'm not saying that this is gonna be the biggest RPG of all time. However, it already captivated people off the rip, and remember, this is why Xbox Game Showcase happened. This is why State of Play events exist. It is all a promotional vehicle. Game trailers exist to be a promotional vehicle to get you excited about the game when it releases. So why did we have a Concord Burger trailer? I ain't gonna let Sony live that one down. Why do we have nonsense fair game trailers? I ain't gonna let, uh, let Sony live that one down either. And it's not just them. Why are we getting Mass Effect trailers a billion years before these games come out? I get it that there's the element of, let's get people excited about games that are not gonna come out in their lifetime. And you need to recruit people uh, into the development studio, but I think it's wild how they do it. And stuff like the KOTOR remake, who knows if that game's ever gonna come out. I much prefer what Sony did with Ghost of Yotai and what Kepler and Sandfall did with Claire Obscure Expedition 33. On top of that, you showcase the game in a captivating way that for a new IP coming from a relatively unknown studio, people will, were already interested about it. Incredibly, incredibly excited for the game. The game will be available on Game Pass as well. So that's pretty cool. And spring of 2025, you guys, that's far earlier than I would have imagined. I thought at best case scenario, we were gonna get a fall 2025 release. And you know, more than likely, 
Obviously, I am more pessimistic than most, but I was like, hey, this is coming from a relatively unknown studio, brand new IP. They probably want to deliver something of very high quality. They'll probably delay it into 2026. Even though the gameplay that we saw in that trailer looked incredibly polished, it's a trailer. They can obviously spice up the gameplay however they want, but knowing that it's coming out in the spring, at the very least, at this point, I can be assured that it's coming out in 2025. Like, if it gets delayed, it'll probably be, uh, get delayed into the fall, and more than likely, given that they're announcing the spring window, that would be April, May. Um, that's not that far away, and they're probably finishing up with the game, you know, polishing the game at this point, and man, it looks fantastic. The soundtrack sounds great, um, the visuals look stunning, and turn-based combat with a little bit of, um, you know, button input as well, adding another layer to it. I am so excited for this game, you guys, and this game, it looks to be one of the standouts of 2025 already, and you're gonna hear me rave about this game ad nauseum, because guess what? I am very critical about a lot of things in gaming. I am very critical about trailer rollouts, how they promote video games, and a lot of elements. But let it be known that when a game captivates me, when a game looks incredible, when it's rolled out the right way, when they're promoting it the right way, when it's something that I can really sink my teeth into, I am going to give them credit. And Clear Obscure Expedition 33, to me, represents something that gaming needs a lot more of. New ideas compelling promotion and giving you an insight into the world and a unique world on top of that. It's a groundbreaking turn-based RPG with unique real-time mechanics making battles more immersive and addictive than ever. While calling back to the real-time combat, it's also something that is supposed to be engaging to a newer audience if you're not a big fan of the turn-based combat, but at the same time, it's a throwback. It's finding that happy medium, at least what I can tell from it so far. Reactive turn-based combat and this evolution of JRPGs Real-time actions enhance the heart of turn-based combat, craft unique builds for your expeditions that fit your playstyle via gear, stats, skill, and character synergies, open an active dimension in combat, dodge, parry, and counter in real-time chain combos by mastering attack rhythms, and target enemy weak points using a free aim system. Narratively, it sounds great. With only one year left to live, join Gustav, Mael, and the, their fellow expeditioners as they embark upon a desperate quest to break the Paintress's cycle of death, follow the trail of previous expeditions, and discover their fate. Get to know the members of Expedition 33 as they learn to work together against impossible odds. Clear Obscure, Obscure uh, Expedition 33, again, out spring of 2025. Let's give this game some attention. Let's get excited for this game because a lot of you guys, too many remasters, too many remakes, no new ideas, turn-based RPGs are lacking, um, even though, you know, that metaphor recently, but so on and so forth, new IPs coming from new studios. I know a lot of you guys just want Final Fantasy to go back to turn-based, but if they're not gonna do that, give attention to these games, and what a great promotional cycle this game has had so far as well. And they didn't reveal it a billion years before it was gonna be released and just get people excited for no reason. At the very least, it looks to be coming out in 2025. Even if it gets delayed at this point, it should be a 2025 title, but currently scheduled for spring of next year. Incredibly excited for this one add it to your wish list be on the lookout for it, and i certainly will cover it a lot more leading into its release and as we hear more that's going to do it for me let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below sound off there thank you for watching and goodbye hey guys we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed do us a favor and hit the bell icon this way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video that's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day and with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.